guys, welcome. This is Jay Zan. This is Elder Scrolls Online. This is my review of Elder Scrolls Online and my little recap on what I think about the game. I've put in a lot of time in it into the game, so pretty much, I mean, the game's only been out for three, a little over three weeks, minus the betas, and um, I've spent probably close to eight hours a day or so, maybe even longer on some days. Um, playing this game, and so I've put a lot of time into it in regards to uh, how long it's been out. I am now Veteran Rank 2. The, the way the leveling structure goes is um, you uh, level to 50, and then you become a Veteran, and then you level to 10. Um, the leveling the experience that you gain after level 50 is only through quests, bosses, and other things. It's not through general grinding uh, towards your character level. Your skill levels, on the other hand, still level up for uh, based off of um, uh, enemy kills and stuff. So I'm going to get into the nitty gritty. What, what do I like about this game? Uh, I like a lot about the game. It's a pretty cool game, but I, there's also a lot of dislikes that I uh, feel about the game as well. And it's not going to be nitpicky shit like your average bugs, which are annoying, but come on, everybody knows by now that the game is full of bugs. Uh, so I'm not going to go too much into the uh, details on that. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit, but but basically, um, yeah, so the quests are, are probably the biggest part, the best part of this game. Um, the fact that every quest that you get is narrated. It's all pretty well written, even the like junk quests where you go and like kill a few enemies and come back. There actually aren't a lot of those, but... Um, the ones that you get are narrated to full, and they have a, a fairly decent plot in, in accordance to the um, to that quest. Uh, and that's probably the strongest feature of this game. There's a lot of lot of narration, a lot of lore. So if you want to hear a lot of story, um, this game's got it. Now, does it make you want to listen to all the junk quests? Um, I tried my hardest at first to try and look to, listen to every little side quests that came up but really they ended up being a lot like this the ones that are in every other mmo uh plot wise help me my cow is sick please go get this herb and and kill this monster because it's causing the water in the area to be poisoned or something like that um it's it's stuff that's i guess you can listen to it but it, it sort of doesn't matter in this kind of world in an mmo um, in single player world, this this game feels a lot more like it was a single player game, like a single player game with people around. That's really a good description of this game, um, because of the way it's built. Um, the main plot though is very interesting. Um, I, I'm not going to go into it at all, but I will mention that it is pretty cool. Uh, the narration and the plot is is pretty good, and it's definitely. Uh, a good addition to the Elder Scrolls lore. This this game it has a ton of lore. You'll find tons of books, ton just like in the game, the the console games. You'll find tons of books, tons of hidden books, tons of people telling you about different things going on and what happens and, and all that sort of stuff. The graphics in the games are is is also very nice, as you can tell. Uh, I'm in Arden, which is a starter zone of uh, the Aldmeri Empire. This is the world map. Um, after you beat, this is where I started up here in these, this area in the Daggerfall Covenant. After you get to level 50, it takes you into veteran content, which starts you back over basically in hard mode, pretty much. It's like playing Diablo, where when you beat the game, it puts you in hard mode, and then you play it again on, with a harder difficulty, uh, through the same content. Uh, the way this game varies it, though, is you go into a different, uh, uh, a different factions area where you can't go normally. And you start the quests over there. So you 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 start back over doing the newbie quests in the other areas, uh, in, with veteran content. So it's harder. It's like you're. It's almost like starting over. When I first got over here, I was really excited because it was all hard. The game was actually sort of challenging, uh, in which it isn't for the first fifty levels. Uh, the music is very nice. I'm not gonna raise it just in case I get some kind of copyright BS stuff that YouTube likes to do. Um, but it has a very good score. It's a very nice sounding game leveling structure is 
fantastic and it's not they didn't do enough to it at the same time the, the way it's fantastic is as you gain levels you gain your attribute points and as you can tell my mage I'm straight magic your attribute attribute points it's almost you want to choose one or the other it, there's only three and they all have large changes to your stats and um you could go like all three like you could like 20 15 and like i don't know whatever you want to do but it's not a good idea it, you just kind of weaken yourself that way and you can respect later anyway if you don't like that um so that part of the living structure is is okay uh as you level up you gain a, a uh uh a skill point which will go to your skills this is the cool part of the game this is my favorite part of the loving structure but it's also s sucky at the same time so let's go straight to your class first you choose a class which gives you three of these once you choose your class uh, i chose the sorcerer which gives you dark magic daedric summoning and storm calling um, based on what you have equipped it increases your your level of the skill um, and by leveling up it lets you learn higher level abilities just like any other mmo um, and when you learn a skill, you, it starts off uh, at level one. At, like if I were to learn Daedric Curse, I would learn this, and then I could use it. As I use it, it levels up to four, and then once it gets to four, I have one here. This is a level four spell. Once it hits four, it morphs into two variants. Like this one is normally an AOE stun, basically mobilize 5.4 seconds, but I can morph it at level four to either add damage. Uh, as added in, when it ends, or uh, snare them when it ends, or you can leave it at that. And then when it levels to four, it levels four more times again, and then that's it. Uh, the problem with that sy this system is, and then you have a ton of passes. The problem with the system is it's way too easy to level up. They don't level up high enough, so it, it kind of defeats the purpose of having only leveling skills. It's just it's too easy to level them up. For instance, if I were to learn. Uh, lightning form and grinded for a half hour to have that skill maxed out to eight four then split into four again and that's that's the weak point of the game it really should level up a lot higher and be a lot harder to level up um, it just it completely kills the point of having this um, system um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure why you did that they did that so and then you have sky shards which you find around the map which I've got all the sky shards in this area. There's a plugin that you can get that shows you location of sky shards, or you can search for them. Uh, but there's sky shards that are hidden all over the place. They're in dungeons. They're on the world map. It, you, you find them through exploring, and they're pretty visible when you see them. There's a huge beam of light. Say this is a sky shard. There'd be a beam of light going up to the like, top of that, like halfway up that tree above it, and so it helps you find them. The sky shards themselves are pretty small, but the light is huge, and. Uh, back in the skills um, so you have your these are just your class skills then you have your weapon skills which are basically classes themselves you can be a, a summoning two-handed warrior which give you a bunch of skills or you can be one-handed shield summoning warrior you can learn all these skills I've uh, learned restoration I'm a healer and I've learned most of my skills some of them I haven't maxed out some I have because I don't use some of these other skills. And then the same with armor. Armor gives you also other benefits. Like light armor gives you mana benefits and and defense and stuff like that. This gives you mana, magic resistance. And then there's medium and heavy armor, which also uh, have skill trees. Uh, you gain those by leveling up with the equipment on you. Rolled is a, a, a skill trees that you get f uh, throughout the game by doing quests or other things. Soul magic you get through your uh, your uh, main quest. It goes up to six with your main quest, and I must I assume after you beat this uh, veterinary, it might go higher, but I'm not sure because I haven't beat the veterinary, which is the entire faction basically. Um, and then vampire you find later, which is a pretty sought after class. There's vampires and werewolves that you can add to your skill tree. Um, which have various benefits and negatives. Then you have your guilds that you uh, find in the game. Uh, the Fighters Guild get better when you fight Daedra and Undead and, and, and do their quests. Mages are through uh, finding. It is this entire skill tree dedicated to finding things in the world, which are like little hidden Easter eggs and 
stuff like that. All are in the form of books. It's lore. But they're all over. You'll find them in dungeons. You'll find them like maybe under this tree. You'll find it everywhere. Inside of towns. And you need to find a lot to level up your mage guild. It's only 5 per level. And yeah, your mage guild is one of the hardest skill trees to raise because of that. Because you have to find all those books. Undaunted you gain uh, abilities for uh, completing dungeons. And it's the same sort of deal. You get their their skill tree. And the Alliance War, this is the PvP skill set. As you level up in PvP, you gain Assault Levels, which lev lets you raise these things, which are pu purely uh, used in PvP for the most part. Uh, for instance, this skill here raises Weapon Damage by 5%, and Magic and Stamina Regeneration by 10% for 10 minutes after capturing a, capturing a Lumber Mill Farm Miner Keep, which are in PvP. Uh, we'll talk about PvP later. And then there's support ones that's, that are for de defensive things in PvP. Then you have your racial class, which has their own skills. Crafting, on the other hand. Crafting, huge waste of time. Um, I've the only I've only put... There's been two classes that I've been focusing hard on. Alchemy, which I've maxed out, which was easy to level up. Like, super easy. You make a potion and it goes up like between 5 and 10%. And it's not hard to make potions. Um, and then you have skills that increase the quality of your potions and the quantity and all that sort of jazz. The ability to find reagents. Uh, my problem with the, the crafting system is... We'll talk about alchemy first. With alchemy, you can create a bunch of different potions. Uh, healing potions, crit potions, stuns, invisibles, etc. Um, for the most part, almost all those potions are useless. Um, only because... Some of your best potions that you can make are, um, for the most part, effectiveless. It's it's really only useful in PvP, any of the alchemy items. Um, and because in PvE, just about every enemy, every every couple enemies you kill, just drop a potion. Every time you go into a dungeon, you're going to end up with like 30 or 40 potions. Healing, mana, stamina, etc. And it'll be based off your level so there's no absolutely zero reason to buy potions uh, really ever during pve in pvp not a lot of people buy potions either partly because it's new and people don't really get to value potions but yeah that's so alchemy is null and void and late game it'll still be null and void because it's so easy to level Anybody who will need potions can just level up, and, and it, if you have reagents, which you can get pretty easily, you can level up alchemy in like a couple hours, at most. Uh, that's actually including finding the reagents and stuff. If you um, have the reagents on hand, you can level it up like in 20 minutes to 50. It's 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 that easy. When it comes to your other crafting skills, blacksmithing, clothing, um, and woodworking, those three, which are your equipment classes those are also null and void um there's no point in leveling them because or uh in, in making them a profession because everybody can level your, their skills up i haven't touched these classes i put a little bit of uh, effort into trying to raise clothing at the beginning of the game when i didn't realize how dumb it was to level up uh to build to like craft your your crafting professions but for instance all right so i'm veteran rank two it's like six it's like 50 level 52 um, every item that drops in, when I go to a dungeon, you're going to, and if you spend a little bit of time in there, you're going to end up with hundreds of, literally hundreds of items that you can deconstruct, uh, without any skill. So you go to the blacksmithing station, station and you deconstruct the items that you've picked up. And you're getting about 5% per item that you, you deconstruct, which is like ridiculous because why? <laughs> um, first off, I can understand deconstructing given a lot of experience to someone who maybe has to have a skill to deconstruct or something. Um, but you don't need any skill to deconstruct, which means you can max out your, your blacksmithing. At Veteran Rank 2, I'm at level 30 blacksmithing. That's 20, 30, 30 and a half, which is 20 below um, max. And all I've been doing is deconstructing. I haven't been crafting. As you can see, it's, I've only got level 1 metalworking. Which is what you start with, um, and it's pointless. Uh, 
all the items that you find are better than what you can craft. The set items that you can find are the only kind of iffy ones, or that you can craft are the only iffy ones that you can have in the future because you can upgrade them and stuff. But even the set items in crafting things are not really that good of a bonus. They're all kind of lame. Um, the crafting, the, the set items that I found through killing are way better than the ones that you can find. Except for there's there's two two of them that are really good. Uh, two, two crafting set items that are really good. But for the most part, the rest of them are, are shit. And it's just a waste of time. Again, because everybody can level up their skills super easily. So by the time anybody would need uh, something crafted for them, all they would have to do is build it themselves because of the, this super easy leveling structure. Uh, by veteran rank 10, I would have everything... Probably by veteran like 5, I would have everything maxed out, except for enchanting. Enchanting is the only challenging one because the runes are harder to find to disenchant, but it's the same sort of deal with these. Uh, enchanting is the only challenging crafting class to level up right now because of the, the, the glyphs are hard to find. Glyphs are what you... you disenchant which is the same as taking apart for the clothing uh but even then so I'm, I'm level 23 um which is almost halfway to max and yeah so enchanting is pretty much the only trade skill in the game that's semi-useful so that kind of just kind of gets rid of anybody who cares about crafting and just says yeah fuck you we don't what's the point of even having these they're not even trade skills they're just professions that are there to keep you busy or something that, because they don't they're useless. So that there's my big gripe about crafting. <sighs> All right. Um roles. There's not really roles. Um you can find tanks, healers, and archers, etc. The first two levels, yes, there's roles because people don't have all the sky shards that they need to learn all their abilities and all that sort of jazz. But by the time you're in, in like Part way through veteran ranks, you're gonna have your your roles d determined. You're gonna have a lot of people are gonna have their restoration maxed. Um, I have just been raising my other classes just for the hell of it, just because I I'm done. I wanted to be a healer, straight up, but realized that everybody can heal, um, and it's not that hard to level it up, especially once you're a veteran. This stuff goes up super fast, um, and everyone's gonna have. There are a couple of classes that they want. They're gonna all. Everyone's gonna have restoration. There's no reason for someone, anyone not to have this, even if they're a warrior. There's a couple of skills that are useful to have just in your inventory, like this one here, which is a healing ward. It, it's it, this is like super ultimate OP. It heals you for 120, then creates 275 damage shield, which boosts by 300% if you're wounded. So if you're like half dead, you cast it. You're pretty much for six seconds invincible to attack and then after that shield goes away you get healed by the remaining part of the shield so it usually heals me to full every time it runs out <clears throat> so it's, it's like shield of immortality and that is a skill that i think everybody's going to have once they know what it is no matter what class they are tank or where and it'll cast on allies and all that sort of jazz um the only way that the only thing that determines uh your uh your class are your sets and um, right now, there's not a huge variety of sets. This is one of the few that are good for healers. Um, it uh, gives you um, bonus health and then gives you te your allies 10% better heals, uh, for closer allies, which is good for AoE heal and stuff like that. Um, and then there's other things that give you mana and stuff like that. Uh, the only classes you're going to find are Mage and Tank. Mage and Warrior. Um, and DP at range DPS. That's kind of it. And the classes are really limited. There's no... Anybody can be anything. Um, which is uh, cool for a single player game. For, for an MMO, it's like pointless. Anybody can join any group. And the, the fact that there's no roles is kind of stupid, in my opinion, in an MMO. Because it pushes away groups. Um, again, the first 50 levels, which take no time at all to get through you have roles for sure because people don't have their skills and set but once you're in veteran content everybody's a freaking everything and it doesn't matter who joins what um everybody can take care of everybody else um the drops 
are kind of a pain in the ass too. You go into a dungeon and you kill 20 enemies, 30 enemies, I don't know, however many you're going to kill in the dungeon, depending on what type of enemy it is. And um, by the time you're through the dungeon, your inventory is going to be full of, of junk trash items that will end up just being broken down into into other stuff. Uh, you find purples and blues and, and uh, yellows, which are different... Um, qualities items in this game but nobody cares about any of those things because the only good items i mean you can find anything that you want on your own with no problem so finding an item and trying to sell it aside from somebody who's new doesn't know any better is pointless um you can sell it for some gold but who cares basically um gold is overall pointless also um aside from bag space that's the only thing really uh, your horse in your bag space that you're going to use gold on because nobody sells anything that really matters the only items that matter are set items um, and there's no reason that to have anything else the only reason this isn't a set item is because I haven't found another one of these and this I found on a dungeon um, at level 50 um, Basically, any dropped items are only used for just space fillers until you find, like, set items. And even then, set items are kind of really the only thing that matter. Um, and you can still find those pretty easy, too. So it's, like, almost pointless to even try and sell those as well. The group finder is, is really stupid, in my opinion. For instance, all right, I'm, level, I'm veteran rank 2. Let me show you something. I'll go into the world map. There's two dungeons here that I haven't been that I just forgot to do. Sal Saline, Saline's Web, which is a level 40 dungeon, and uh, Blackheart Haven, which is a level 50 dungeon. Um, in the group finder, when you're under level 50, you can uh, choose your dungeon, and then you can choose any any dungeon within uh, the uh, lower level range. Um, but, but when you try and use the group finder at veteran, you can't choose any of your uh, lower level dungeons, so you have to go and, and beg for people. And even then, when you're at the right level uh, to use group finder, for instance, all right, let me I'm gonna use group finder for um, for a veteran dungeon. Um, oh yeah, there it is, right there, veteran dungeon. So there's these are the three that are available right now because I'm I'm veteran rank two. So let's say I want to join uh, a spindle crush group. All right, I'm gonna start a search. All right, so it puts me in a queue, and that was a bad example. <laughs> um, if I, I join the group immediately, but for the most part, for the mo most of the time, it just doesn't work. Uh, you you sit in a queue for hours, you end up with two people, and then it like stops filling the queue. Uh, either they fix that because there's a patch today to make that work or I was just lucky a lucky fluke to find a group uh, that way but for the most part that never works nobody's ever in it and it doesn't work um, but as you just saw maybe it works now uh, because of a patch that happened today um, and if so then that part you can just kind of disregard let's try FOMO Grotto real quick and see what happens yeah uh, maybe they fixed group finder so so um, you can take that as you will. Um, and then finally, the grouping system, level 1 to 50. Um, I haven't found any enemies. I've been kind of not really paying attention, but I haven't come across any, any enemies right now either. Um, level 1 to 50 grouping is pointless as well. Um, the only time grouping matters, level 1 to 50, is, is when you're trying to get into the big dungeons. When you're going to the small dungeons... There's usually people around, and you gain experience by any... If you tag an enemy, uh, you'll get experience from it. You don't even have to do very much damage. Or you can just heal people nearby you. Um, and um, you'll, you'll get experience if, you're, if your heal ticked on an enemy. And... Um, yeah, uh, so grouping is sort of pointless at, for level 1 to 50 because you can just run through. You can follow somebody. You can be level 2 
and go to the if you manage to go to the uh, last area, which is um, uh, Banker Eye, which is level 40, 45 to fifty or forty to fifty area, and just follow some people around with your heal spell and just heal them, and you'll get credit for the quests, and you'll get experience from their kills, and you'll be able to loot the loot the drops. It's it it. it it's very exploitable to to do that, and I've still not found any enemies. There's there's like usually an enemy over there, and it wasn't there for some reason. Not even a mud crab to slay. Um, so it, late game grouping. The only time grouping starts slowly starts to matter is in like fetching three content and so and stuff because enemies start having more health than you can do. You can kill one or two at a time, but there's usually like large groups of enemies that. Um, are just nuts that will kick your ass. Hey, an enemy, a mud crab. Um, combat. I don't know if I've even talked about that. Um, all right, and there's a bug right there. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention bugs slightly. Um, I'm jumping all over the place. I'll finish my combat statement. Combat in this game is a joke. Enemies are, are too easy to kill. It takes two shots to kill. While well, a mud crab is not ex a good example, and I'm stuck in my freaking casting loop, and I can't run now. Yeah, I'm bugged. I can't even freaking run. That's annoying. Um, nor attack. It won't let me attack that. Ah, <laughs> uh, bugs. Um, enemies are super easy. The bosses are easy. Um, Grouping just makes the game easier. This entire game is too easy. It's a very casual feeling game. Um, just enemies are not challenging until veteran, and then they sort of become challenging. Which the entire game should have been veteran. Rank. It should have started in veteran rank difficulty, where enemies didn't take two hits to kill. Minus that mud crab, where they actually posed a threat. I'm stuck in my freaking casting walk. Can't walk or roll cast anything else that's that's pretty annoying um oh there it finally goes okay um but yeah the enemies are just way too weak in this game it's it's way too casual this game is too easy too easy this game the first 50 levels were pointless it was it was easy mode Nothing was hard. There was no challenges to be had. Except the very final boss of the easy mode, which was only challenging because of my uh, vampire uh, debuffs that I had on me, um, which make me weak fire against fire. That guy used a lot of fire. Um, but the fact that the game is too easy, the, the fact that you can get to max level and demolish every enemy in the game solo without any challenge... Uh, really kind of made the game pointless. It was this game is a single player game. It really is by how easy it is with the simple enemies and stuff. Um, I'm gonna go in the PvP real quick. Um, and give you a quick example of PvP. I think of all the things in this game, aside from the quest, I think if this is a, a game, is this game worth buying? Yes. I think it's worth buying if you like single player games. If you like a single player RPG with a, a pretty good amount of single player content, this is a good single player game. Is it a good MMORPG? Not if you like uh, player versus enemy, your normal content, uh, fighting enemies and going through dungeons and all this sort of stuff. It's not a good MMORPG, it's not worth buying. If you want a multiplayer game, um, on the other hand, in the PvP, which I'm still queuing up to go in, oh, I can get in now. In the PvP, on the other hand, it's pretty fun. It's not enough for me to keep my subscription, partly because I don't really like PvP that much in MMO. I'm not really, I don't play them for PvP. I play them for PvE. I like a challenge where I can go and fight a hard dungeon and kill a hard boss with a good group. Not where I can run in, demolish a dungeon in two seconds, and then be done. Uh, one more one more thing about dungeons in, in the way this game reuses assets. 
there's about eight dungeons or so. Uh, real dungeons. Let me get out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen dungeons. Those are the only dungeons that actually have AI and are actually designed in some sort of way. Then you have ruins, which are the dungeons you find throughout the world. And there's there's there are dungeons in the PvP area. For instance, see if I can see one in here. These ruins frequently have dungeons in them. Um, where you go into a cave and it's and then there's your dungeon inside of it. The thing the problem with those dungeons are it's a short linear path. If you look on the mini map um, up here, like this circle here, it's almost the shape of pretty much every dungeon. You just follow a line all the way around, kill the boss, and leave. Sometimes there's a sky shot, sometimes there's not. There's no off branching, there's no nothing, and, and it's not even that. It's not the fact that it's linear, it's the fact that every dungeon, well, not every, a lot of the dungeons. Are just cut and paste. It's like the exact same design. You have the exact same staircase at the exact same place. You have the exact same same shape dungeon. You're just replaying the same shit over and over and over again. In towns, assets are reused to shit. You'll go in one town. You'll see this house. You'll go inside, and then the only thing that might be different are the boxes or like the barrels or something but the like tables will be in the same spot the fireplace will be in the exact same spot it's like going to a suburb in like some some town some some crappy cut and paste box cookie cutter town in in america it's just it's the same shit over and over um for instance these two towers exact same thing they have some doodads on it but they're the exact same thing and that's acceptable in, in like one one area, like one castle. But then you go to another castle, and you have the exact same two types of towers, exact same building, exact same castle, exact same inn. It's all the same shit. Um, and to be honest, it's not a big deal. To me, I don't really care that much about reused assets in a huge game like this. But it's something that to just point out because it's kind of stupid that they do that. Uh, but I'm also the kind of person who likes 8-bit games, so I don't really care that much. But it is kind of dumb to see the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over again. You don't see that too much in a lot of MMOs. Um, but this game does use the same shit over and over. <clears throat> so we're in PvP. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of PvP before we go. I need to turn off... This, this mini-map here on, the, on my screen is an add-on. It doesn't even come with it. That's why it's kind of just floating there. It also bugs out PvP. Um, so I'm going to take it off right now. Alright, so PvP is really cool. Uh, it's entertaining. This is the PvP world. This is Cyrodiil. Um, the, the colors of the, of the things are the um, faction control buildings. You go and control the faction. You can't go... Uh, you can't teleport from one to another. For instance... If if there's if your cutoffs locked, so for instance, if we own this castle here for some reason, and not this one, the only way to get here to defend it would be to walk like all the way around or all the way around. It'd be impossible, and that would be pretty much gone. So, you you'd want to cut it off. Um, for instance, a good strategy for them would be to take this one out first before this, because we wouldn't be able to get to this anymore um, by teleporting. And this is a pretty huge zone. Um, uh, I'll show you the combat in PvP. That's that's one of the more interesting parts. There's the scrolls that give your characters bonuses in PvE as well, which are these here, which yellow is dominating. Obviously, they have every scroll in, in the game, and for some reason, red is attacking us, even though they have all the scrolls. Not right now, but obviously they were. Um, the scrolls give perm or, uh, give temporary bonuses to you in in PvP and PvE. For, um, for instance, it would show it under active effects here, like a boon for the scroll. Um, let me teleport. I need to buy a siege weapon first to show you guys one of the cooler parts of PvP. The siege weapons. You can buy different siege weapons. Going into battle without a siege weapon is like um, let's do... I'll just pay money. I'll buy two trebuchets. You can put siege weapons anywhere in the world, for the most part, if it fits. 
in PvP. I'm gonna go somewhere. Oops. I'm gonna go somewhere where there's some combat. Um, let's see where they're saying. Where's combat? There is combat. Um, there's like nobody doing anything. And there's nothing on the map either. So I guess we'll go here. This looks like where it would be. It's where the scrolls are and it's where the other guys are mainly at. So we're going to teleport to the end of our, our structures and uh, show you some stuff. The way PvP is cool is because you can you can get into your siege thing and you can fire a, a catapult shot and take out a bunch of people or you can attack their walls and destroy parts of their keep to get in. You don't have to go through one little spot to get in. You can go through their doors or you can go through just – you can blast a hole in their walls. Um and, and all that sort of stuff using your trebuchets. I'm going the wrong way. Alright, so is there any combat? Let's look again. Alright, over here. We're going to go that way. I'm going to head east. It's, uh, it's going to be a ways, but... Um, yeah, there's large groups of uh, of combat, and it, it look it feels a little more organized than other MMO PvP things, like um, for instance Guild Wars, where you're sitting there. Uh, I haven't played Guild Wars two since like a few weeks after launch, but back then you would just sit there. For instance, say this is your your territory, and that was theirs on the other side of that bridge. You'd be just sitting here for like an hour, just shooting random shots and hopefully kill like one or two people and then they come back and, you, and you'd be stuck in one spot for hours. This game isn't like that. Um, it keeps a fall fairly quickly with the organized army. So it's it's um, a little bit faster paced as PvP and then there's other ways that make it a little more fast paced like the trebuchets and stuff where you can kill groups of enemies one shot if you are skillful enough with it. Um, Alright, so we're getting close to the combat. Oh. And I'm getting ganked by... Oh, these are just NPCs. Why didn't I see them? I'm, I don't know. Um, Alright, I'm going to kill these NPCs. Real quick. To get them off my ass. Okay, well... Anyway, let's get back in the, into the fray. <clears throat> um, I totally didn't see those NPCs. They might have just spawned, or I just wasn't paying attention, or whatnot. But, yeah, the PvP area has a ton of uh, NPCs as well. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, the fact that you can kill groups of enemies with your, with your shots if you're, if you're skillful enough. Um, so, this looks like... There's comet even before the castle. I guess we almost had the scroll. Um, yeah, there's other ways that you can you can kill people in PvP. You can s sneak up to someone and gank them. Anybody can go stealth um, just by crouching. Some people are better than others because they have skills that s make themselves more powerful. Um, okay, so there's allies over here and we are taking over their lumber mill looks like so so this is a small PvP battle capturing a lumber mill um, you take over you take out the resources and they can't repair their uh, or it's they can't teleport to their buildings and they can't repair it as easily and all that sort of stuff by taking out the resources Aside, it's mostly taking out the resources is an easier way to, to slow down their defenses because it's, it's harder for them to um, there's someone right there, an enemy he's toast, there's no way he's going to survive that was a VR4 but who's, what, I don't, someone's attacking me and I don't see them, oh Let's get by the Zerg and we'll, we'll take him. I could probably handle him. I'm going to fight him. Sick. And I'm stuck in my casting loop again. 
and I'm going to die because of it, because I can't sprint. Alright, so we're going to fight Bugged Out. I still haven't gone into the bugs yet, which I can't cast right now because I'm bugged. I got out of it by pressing escape. That worked last time. Alright. So, you can... I'm going to put... I got a hotkey, my trebuchets. I see the only way to use them. I'm going to put a trebuchet down once we get closer to their thing. There's somebody over here. Alright, he's hiding, obviously. Now he's gonna go get killed by slaughterfish. Slaughterfish are basically the game's way to tell you you can't go into water. Slaughterfish will kill you. It takes 25% of your health away at a time. Thought that was an enemy. Alright, so we're about to siege this keep. I was hoping it would happen sooner, but it's not. Alright, so... Level 12, Kai. This is a pretty small group of, of people here. Allies. So he's got a, a, a ballista up there. And there's a bunch of people in the back, too. So, we'll see what happens here. You can set their, their siege weapons on fire, which will destroy them. It's not burning though for some reason. Probably another bug. I don't know why they're not attacking this guy. <laughs> I, I there's no there's no chance. There's there's fifty of them. So you can place your siege weapons like that, and if you're not defending it, they can set them on fire, which does a ton of damage in a, a second. Uh, I'm just going to put a siege weapon on the ground, just so you can see how the siege weapons work, because obviously we're not going to get anywhere. Right here, it takes a little bit of time to get set up to where you have an actual con uh, actual battle system. Alright, so why isn't... oh, there it is. All right, so say they're attacking this keep here. Sorry, I'm spending way way too much time in PvP here trying to show you what it is and why it's fun. So I'm gonna put a, a trebuchet right here. So you can you can buy your trebuchets for super cheap. Anybody can do it. And say they're attacking your keep. So you go into your trebuchet view, which is this, and based on the location of your uh, trebuchet, is where you can see and fire, and you can go closer and further and stuff. So you fire and it does that and it sh fires your huge fireball with this one there's different types of siege weapons and you you can attack walls you can attack people all this sort of jazz and it's just it's fun that way because the uh the strategies um can vary from time to time you can be in a field and put this down and fire a trebuchet on a group of enemies and, and kill a couple of them and then take your trebuchet and get the hell out of there you'll probably die but uh, but you can. It's possible to do that. So, yeah, the PvP is is kind of the only f fairly fun part about this game, and they have mentioned in they have mentioned that this was a PvP-centric game and that they wanted it to be PvP. Um, and with that being said, it's not enough to hold my, my interest. It's not enough to hold my subscription. Uh, would I pay for the, Would I continue the subscription? No, I don't think I would. Um, I'm have already gotten through most of the PvE content. There's an adventure zone coming, which is just another zone for higher level content. That's all it is. They're tr trying to make it out to be more, but it isn't really. There's 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 a, a, a leaderboard system that they've added, and that's it. It's it's the same shit with more difficulty, um, which is good. It's good that they're adding more hard shit, but um, the first 50 levels should have been a lot harder. The fact that it was too easy to level 
the fact that the enemies are too easy, the fact that you don't have to fight any, you don't even have to fight anything. You can just walk around and heal people, put a regen spell on people, and then um, follow them around, and you'll get experience and loot and all that sort of stuff. And all that stuff, the fact that PvE is non-existent for the most part, um, PV, there's no challenge in PvE is the fact that it is the reason that I won't resubscribe. Um, no matter how cool it is. I might come back later at some point, but probably not. Um, I will probably move on to another MMO, hoping for some kind of challenge. And if this game actually kind of... If this game was veteran difficulty level content from the beginning, to where it actually every enemy posed a threat, and you sort of had to think about what you were fighting, um, I would probably be like level 25 right now, and, and not anywhere near finishing the game. And since I've already beat the PvE, peak, the PvE content, I don't find much more reason. I've already maxed out my level. I've All my skills are just about maxed out, all the ones that I care about. Um, any more skills that I'm going to learn are just for the fact of leveling them up. Uh, that I, No other reason than that. Um, it's just... The game had so much potential, it just... They made it too easy. They made it a casual MMO, and... MMO players aren't casual players. Some of them are, but for the most part, people want a game that will keep them for years. This one won't. It's, sorry to say it, but this just this game won't. Um, the game was fun while I played it, but it was too easy. And that's 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 it. Um, I'm not. I'm not even going to the bugs. If you want to find bug information, go go somewhere else. You'll find bug information all over the place. Uh, you already saw a few bugs from, from me playing right now, from enemies popping up out of nowhere to my casting being stuck in an endless casting loop. There's a lot of bugs out there that can be dismissible, uh, but they really get annoying. Uh, you, you can look up other things about those. I'm not going to go into them here. Um, so thanks guys for watching. This was Elder Scrolls Online. Unfortunately, it uh, is it. It's... It, it it got me plenty of play time. Um, for my sixty bucks, I think it was worth it. I think it was worth the sixty bucks fee. I think it's worth if you want to play a game for sixty ish hours or so, get a fair amount of PVE content. I think for a single player game, it's it's worth sixty bucks. For MMO, it's not worth resubscribing. So yeah, this is uh, this was Elder Scrolls Online. Thank you very much for watching. This is Jay Zen. Let me know what you think. What do you think about the game? Do you think that the game was too easy like I think? Do you think that my uh, views are completely wrong? Let me know. I'd like to hear your opinions. Um, thank you very much again. <laughs> I'll see you next time.